For this edition of Hammerhead Gearhead, we look at the Nikon Z firmware 3.0. We test the updated subject tracking functionality and animal detect autofocus. I have to say that this is the most fun episode yet because we get to test it with my dogs. Hey Gearheads, welcome back to Hammerhead Gearhead. I'm Noel Guevara, conservation photographer and filmmaker based in Manila. Today, we're doing a 343. It's the Nikon Z firmware 3.0 update for our third episode. If you remember, a few weeks back, the first episode of this show was the Nikon Z7 Honest Field Review. And in that video, I expressed my hope that Nikon will update the autofocus system of the Z series. Well, we have that now. This is the much anticipated 3.0 update for the Nikon Z series, so I felt that it's appropriate to have another video on this. Right, so for this video, we are focusing specifically, pun intended, on auto area autofocus, subject tracking, and animal eye and face recognition. Because that's what I do, I focus and shoot wildlife. There are other videos that tackle the human aspect, human face and eye recognition, so we'll leave it at that. Right now though, we are on home quarantine, it's a lockdown, and I hope you are, like me, staying put. I don't have access to wildlife though, so what are we going to do? We are going to do tests with my four wonderful dogs. So obviously I can't contain my excitement and let's do this video. So there are a lot of updates on firmware 3.0 according to the release notes, one of which would be the expanded support for CF Express memory cards. But we're focusing specifically on two things. First is the improved functionality for subject tracking, and second, the addition of animal face and eye recognition. So first, we tackle the improved functionality of subject tracking. Where do we do that? It all starts in the menu. To activate the subject tracking functionality, we have to head on over here to the pencil icon, and then down to controls or letter F. Select F2 or custom control assignment, and you will see the different buttons that we could customize. We are focusing on FN1 and FN2. I've set these already, so I will just show you how to do them. For FN1, make sure you have subject tracking assigned. So this is what will enable the subject tracking mode and will make that tracking box, that small box, pop up. For FN2, you assign focus mode slash AF area mode. So this is what will allow us to easily switch between auto area autofocus and maybe dynamic area autofocus. So you set that here. So for these two, this is what works for me. I usually have my middle finger on FN1 and then I have my ring finger on FN2 should I want to toggle it. You can easily customize this depending on how you work. So that's it. Let's try this with some birds outside my window. Okay, so here we are with dynamic area autofocus enabled and I hold down FN2 and spin the dial so I can go to auto area autofocus, hit FN1 to bring up the subject tracking box. And I can use AF on my shutter or either to lock onto a particular target or subject as you can see here with these branches. So I hold down AF on, back button. Okay, here's a bird and see how it tracks and locks on to his head. There you go. Take a few photos and it... All right, so you see here that it's really sharp. The focus is really sharp. And uh, you can even see that strand of fiber on that bird. And uh, it really, really locks on. It's tack sharp. So those fibers, they sometimes bring that and use it to build their nests or to add to their nests. Yeah, look at that. Really sharp. That's how good the subject tracking works. Now this one, I wanted to see how well it would work if there are foreground elements that are obstructing our actual subject. So normally I wouldn't take the shot, I'd probably move in and uh, reposition, but I wanted to see how well it works. So there you go, oops. So it is switching between the bird and some of the leaves, some of the branches. But look at that. It's still locked on, tack sharp, it has some fruit on its mouth or beak and yeah, look at that, pretty good. It was able to discern between the subject. Oh, oops, here, it switched to the branch. Yeah. But yeah, look at that, it's back again. You can see those eyes. The thing is, I'll probably use, um, if I had to shoot this, I'll probably use a pinpoint focus instead of the subject tracking. So I could just permanently set it on the bird. 
Okay, for this next bird, the face and eye recognition for animals is turned on. But since it couldn't see, you know, it couldn't recognize a face or the eye, it was just using the red boxes for auto area autofocus. I quickly switch to subject tracking, lock on the bird, take the photos. There you have it. Really, really sharp. So for this set of uh, photos for the birds, I'm using a 7200 2.8 FL with a 1.4 teleconverter, a Kenko teleconverter on my Z7. And yeah, it really performed really well. Look at all those photos. Probably one or two shots are out of focus with the other bird, the one with the foreground elements. But with this one, I think we have it all. Okay, trying vertical. Alright, so locked on to the head and take a few photos and look at that. I just love the compression, how it looks. I love the separation between the background and the foreground and the subject. And yes, the subject is sharp all the way. So I have all of these in one to one magnification so you can see if the eyes are in focus or not. As you can see, operating the subject tracking mode has become much easier and more organic, unlike before where you had to hit the OK button to activate and the zoom out button to deactivate. So overall, it's a much improved experience and everything flows much better. Now, check out this really nice photo of the yellow vented bulbul that I got from our test. Now on to the actual test. So I want to find out two things. First, if the autofocus has indeed been improved. And second, if the functionalities as a whole do increase my chances of coming home with keepers as compared to before. So as you all know, I'm a very old fashioned photographer. I use AFS, Pinpoint, and Wide for wildlife photography. So I want to see if through these tests, I'll be converted to use auto area AF or subject tracking or at the very least AFC. So we will be doing four tests, one per dog. And I want to remind everyone that these photos are not exactly portfolio material. They're just here to represent the results of each test. For this first test, we are joined by Chloe. So Chloe is a seven-year-old Chihuahua mix and she is the alpha female here at home. So this first test is very straightforward. I wanted to see how well the autofocus system would pick up on Chloe, on her eye and on her face. So I had Chloe behind a cage wall to simulate high grass and I was throwing treats at her to make it more fun. So let's check it out. Okay, for this test, first let's hand on over to the menu system and let's turn on animal eye and face auto detection. There you go, it's tracking Chloe's eye, but it seems to be locking on to the cage. So I'm trying to fix that. Uh, no, it's still locking. Maybe we should try something else. Okay, let's try vertical. And there it is. It's locking on her again. So we're using a 7200 with this one with an FTZ adapter. This one's out of focus. This one's in focus. Yes, in focus. Look at that. Really sharp on the eyes. Nice. Pretty good. Considering there's a cage in front of her. <laughs> She's very persistent. For this second test, we have an assistant, Chucky. So Chucky is a six-year-old Chihuahua and Toy Poodle mix, and he's actually the son of Chloe from test number one. So for this test, I wanted to see how good the focusing system would track a subject that's coming towards me at speed. Sure, just relaxed. And Chucky here is one of the fastest runner of the pack. So I had Chucky line up out in the street and run towards me. So we shot this before the quarantine, the lockdown. So Chucky here had more hair as compared to now. He's a bit more trimmed and it was so much fun. So check it out. Okay, first let's turn off the auto area AF for face and eye detection. And there goes Chucky and the box is looking for, oh, there you go. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, well, this one's a bit out of focus. This was this one's really sharp and sharp again. Well, not that sharp, but here, yes, this is stack sharp. And this one, we just lost it. 
Okay, let's do that again. Here he is running really fast and the box can't tag him. Only tagged him on the last part. So here it's clearly out of focus. Still out of focus. This one's okay, I guess. A bit soft and this one's a bit soft too. Let's try that one more time. And there's the tracking box on him. And here he comes and click, click, click. So I'm assuming here that he's in focus because the focus plane, uh, everything in the background is in focus. This one, not so much. As you can see, Chucky is running really fast. Okay, this one's soft. This one's in focus. Okay, out of focus. And one last time. Whoop. There you go. So sometimes the tracking box really goes wild and goes around the whole frame. But here, it was pretty spot on for most of the shots. As you can see here. Yep, that's in focus. Yeah, there you go, that's in focus. Pretty good. A bit soft, slightly soft, and this is soft. Yeah, that's, that's really soft. For our third test, we are joined by Max. Up, oh, good boy. Here you go. So Max is my seven-year-old black lab. He's a rescue. I saw him in a gas station and it was a big foster fail. So for this test, I wanted to compare subject tracking with animal face and eye recognition. I wanted to see which one is a better choice. So we have a studio-like environment. I was shooting Max's portrait and I wanted to see which one has a better hit rate. So let's check it out. Here we are with Max with the subject tracking box on him. And look how it latches onto his eye as he turns. Um, there, it went wild again, but you just have to reset, go back to the eye and there you go. Look at that, look how sharp that is. Really nice, really, really nice. Beautiful. So it was able to reset. Well, I reset it, but it was able to find the eye again. Really in focus, eyes in focus. That was the most important thing with wildlife photography. So let's switch now to animal detection, face and eye recognition. Here you have the AF boxes, auto area boxes, and there you go. It's recognizing the eye again with those arrows. So if I press left or right of those arrows, it will switch between the two eyes. If it can't recognize an eye or a face, those boxes will appear for auto area autofocus. Really, really sharp. Lost that one with the mouth open, but it's back again here. It's very sharp with the eyes, very consistent, very reliable. So here I'm using a 7200. So first let's try again the eye and face recognition and he moved a bit and it was lost. So let's see how that went. So this one is a bit soft. Oh, this was soft. Yeah, that's, that's really soft now. All right, let's switch to subject tracking mode and track him. Almost the same action. He was sitting still and then he moved forward again and let's see how well that went. <laughs> still sharp. Okay, that's sharp too. This one is still in focus. Oh, uh, this one went soft a bit with his face. And that one is out of focus. Okay, that one's out of focus. Out of focus again. And that one's just really out of focus. For this last test, I wanted to throw the recognition system a curveball. I wanted to see how it would do with a subject that doesn't have eyes. So we have here Mika. She is our senior dog. Hi, hey, Mika and she had her eyes removed a few years back because of infection. So I shot her in a studio type setup and let's check out how the system worked and how glamorous she is. Okay, so this one will be a quick test. Let's just see how it performs. It's just the auto area autofocus boxes that are really working and tagging her. There is no recognition at all. No face, no eye, but it's still Going well, this one's sharp, yes. Let's try it with the subject tracking. Oh, this one's going much better. It's tracking her head. So in this instance, and probably it works for animals that are not cats and dogs, the subject tracking will work really well. 
So personally, I will still choose the subject tracking over the face and eye detection. This one's not sharp. This one's back. Okay. Tracking caught it again. And yeah, there you go. To round it all up, let's look at the two features that we assess. So first is the subject tracking functionality. Hands down, there is a big improvement in this regard. It's so much easier to switch between dynamic area autofocus, auto area autofocus, and human or animal eye and face detection. Basically, the modes that we use a lot when we are on AFC. As for the autofocus, I noticed that there is definitely a big improvement as well, as you can see through the tests. I also noticed that I was walking away with a better hit rate and I had more keepers as compared to before firmware 3.0. Next is the animal face and eye recognition. It's more of a hit and miss for me, so it's a bit of a 50-50. I'm not as confident with this feature. I would actually rather use the subject tracking mode, which is the more reliable out of the two features. If you like this video, I hope you would consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you can get updated when I upload new content. You can also follow me on Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo, for more of my work on conservation and wildlife. So, well, I think we have a convert. I'm finally switching out of AFS and into AFC. I liked what I saw with auto area autofocus and subject tracking. So much so that I think I'll make an underwater version of this video. Let's take the 3.0 to the test underwater. Now, how has it been for you guys? What is 3.0 for you? How was your workflow? What's your experience? You know, I would really, really like to know. So let me know in the comments and let's discuss further. That's it guys, thank you very much. I will see you soon. Please stay safe and stay at home. Cheers.